building an assault vest. Both players with the choice card for Urshifu uh, may see them up against each other and right of the way, keon has got one Urshifu and there's the other one on the other side. Oh wow, okay. So we've got the dueling Urshifus ahead of each other as we, well as the Palipper. I feel like that's gonna play a huge role in enabling both of these Urshifu. Both Urshifu now have uh, boosted surging strikes, but both of them only have water resist to fire into on the other side. Pelipper gets the better of the Rillaboom versus Pelipper matchup, but of course the Rillaboom on Kian's side is a problem for the Urshifu on Ryan's side. Can I either just go after it with a wood hammer or pressure something like a surging strikes plus grassy glide to try to take out the Urshifu on the other side before it can even move if Kian is confident that his Urshifu is faster. Pelipper, though, is a little bit more difficult to take off the field. I would require a double target uh, and can fire a hurricane in either slot. But no, at this point, just helping handing to boost the Urshifu on Ryan's side. Well, the Rillaboom is going to go for the Grassy Glide, though. Pelipper is not resistant to that. It's just going to be some neutral damage as it is the close combat in response. A one-hit knockout into Kion's Urshifu means that it doesn't get a chance to move in this game just yet. The Choice Scarf helping Ryan's to move faster. Ryan seizing the speed advantage has the faster Urshifu rapid strike or just tied and wins the coin flip on that turn but it means with the helping hand boost from Pelipper able to pick up the close combat and stop the Urshifu rapid strike on the other side before it can even attack you have to imagine with the targeting from Kion that's probably looking for something like surging strikes plus grassy glide to take a KO onto Pelipper before it can get a hurricane off but that's stopped in its tracks because of the close combat now Urshifu does lose a stage of defense makes it a lot more vulnerable to a grassy glide from the other side and Zacian gets to come in here relatively for free doesn't have to worry about taking a surging strikes on the other side but of course the Urshifu is still the fastest thing on the field. It's still going to fire a close combat into one of these slots. It's still going to deal a ton of damage if it doesn't get disrupted by Grassy Glide. Yeah, and it's tough too because I think what you're really hoping for is that you are able to make some type of piece of resistance against the Ice Rider Calyrex that you were expecting to be in the back. That's kind of unusual when we see these Ice Rider Calyrex teams to not see that Pokemon led and try to establish that trick room right away. But we still aren't going to see it just yet. Ryan actually opting to switch out the Urshifu, reset those drops and the move that it's locked into in favor of this Amoongus that takes that Grassy Glide so much better. And in fact, it's going to dish out even a bit more damage back with that Rocky Helmet recoil. But as we see that Behemoth Blade into the Pelipper, it has an invisible Focus Sash and it's just able to hang on through all of that hurt firing off a weather ball into the Zacian to bring it to half already. That's a really pivotal damage dealt to Zacian. It's going to lower it enough that something like Urshifu later on can easily deal with it with a close combat or a surging strikes. You could see the effect that the, the kind of magnetism that Urshifu Rapid Strike had in that last position, Keon already behind in the game, didn't want to give up another close combat, and so had to chase the Urshifu with it, a Grassy Glide, despite Amoongus being such an easy switch in there, and then of course missing the KO into Pelipper makes that a very punishing turn for Keon. Well, the Behemoth Blade is going to deal a significant amount of damage to this Amoongus, but you're still whittling away at the Zacian's HP pool with the opportunity to go for just a little bit of Rocky Helmet chip back. An unfortunate miss from this Rillaboom, though, with the high horsepower, ends up getting punished with not only the damage from this Hurricane, but also with that huge confusion and the spore into the Zacian. It's just insult to injury here. Such an important miss. The Amoongus might have been healthy enough to take that attack anyway. This turn I don't think was going to go very well for Kion regardless. The, the Hurricane and the Rillaboom is just those health bars going lower and lower. Already lost Urshifu on the first turn and now has Zacian and Rillaboom quite low. Um, but Amoongus not taking the high horsepower means it's still relatively healthy here. If it switches out and gets a set of Regenerator, it will look even more healthy towards the end of the game. And Zacian not having slept for a turn now. It's going to be a long time before Keon can get any value out of that Zacian. For now, Rillaboom just headed to the back in favor of this Umbreon. Ooh, well, kind of looking a little bit more forward, this Umbreon actually has a really unique position in this matchup because in its moveset, it does have access to Taunt and Foul Play, which might be a really great way of shutting down this Amoongus from going for anything else as well as shutting down a Trick Room option in the back. This Zacian, though, it fell asleep and now it's down for the count. Does provide an option for this Rillaboom to come back in and have some sort of fake out pressure, but even take a look at how much Pollen Puff is doing to this dark type Umbreon. The health bars are just getting so low. Zacian only has to sleep for one turn before going down to Weather Ball, and now it's a quite low Rillaboom and an already damaged Umbreon that's not going to be able to win a 1v4. Keon has dealt some damage, Amoongus is low, Pelipper all the way down to that false Focus Sash at one health, but still has all four Pokemon. Rillaboom can probably deal with one of them, but dealing with all of the team is just going to be too much to ask. It feels like Ryan has an unsurmountable advantage in this game one. 
really does. I mean, you can go for the Grassy Glide here to at least deal with the threat of this Pelipper. You're not going to get any recoil back from hitting into the Rocky Helmet that this Amoongus is carrying. And you kind of hope that maybe Umbreon's going to be able to do a little bit more. The Snarl, a pretty nice twist to lock into just to help whittle away this Amoongus. But it also mitigates some of the damage that this Pollen Puff is going to be able to do. Oh, it's and it's not. going to allow this Rillaboom to survive. Yeah, really crucial for Keon to not go down to only Umbreon at this point. The Snarl is enough to mitigate the damage coming from the Pollen Puff on the other side, combined with the Assault, assault Vest and Rillaboom, lets it just hang on, get some grassy terrain recovery. Still a very uphill battle with two uh, damaged Pokemon, and Ryan not even having to show his restricted Pokemon yet. All, no grassy terrain also means Rillaboom doesn't have priority anymore, so this Urshifu Rapid Strike is going to have free reign to go out on the offense and just take out Rillaboom before it can move. There's no way to stop it. It's just going to be a Surging Strikes going into that slot. Yeah, it's it's such a tough ask, and it's really unfortunate how that grassy terrain expiration was timed with the return of this Urshifu. But one way to keep yourself in this fight is by having this defensive Terra on this Umbreon to change it into this Water Terra type. It's going to resist those Rapid Strike Urshifu hits, and it also removes that weakness to if you were to take a close combat here. So perhaps this Umbreon still has a little bit more state in this fight if there's a yawn there's a way return the favor with this sleep no doubt <laughs> it's going to take Ryan a substantial amount of time to deal with the water type of we know that his last Pokemon is the Calyrex Ice Rider now as a water type Umbreon also resists Glacial Lands and so in another way this game could have played out where there were a lot more resources left on Keon's side that water terrestrialization have a about the Rillaboom choice was it the right Pokemon to be able to bring into a matchup like this Keon seems to think so actually gonna lead that Rillaboom again and it's the same leads across the board for both of our players heading into this game too Rillaboom, a really key piece for dealing with the Urshifu on the other side, but has a lot of uphill battles in this match. In the last game we saw it have to deal with an Amoongus that just switched in and dealt Rocky Helmet damage back, and a Pelipper that landed a massive hurricane for a ton of damage into it, and that's before the Calyrex Ice Rider that would have been threatening a 1k with Glacial Lance. So a lot of difficult Pokemon for the Rillaboom to fight against, but if you feel like it's your only way to stop the Urshifu Rapid Strike that had so much impact for Ryan, then you can see why it's being led and why we're back in the same leads. As Fake Out goes into Pelipper this time, no helping hand, instead just a close combat into the Urshifu on the other side. And you can see how well that Urshifu is able to take that without that helping hand. So a really smart decision by Kion to actually just go for the fake out into the Pelipper instead. It's going to help break the focus, Ash. Obviously, it doesn't matter if you're going to hit it with the Surging Strikes as well. That's going to be a multi-hit attack. But it does bring this Pelipper down low enough that another Grassy Glide will be able to finish it off. Or even potentially an Aqua Jet. Possibly. I... I think the way this turn one plays out explains a lot of the turn one of the previous game. You can see that Surging Strikes plus Fake Out isn't enough damage to pick up Pelipper. You can see why the Grassy Glide was targeted into Pelipper for that reason, but also Close Combat doesn't KO the Urshifu on the other side. We've now seen two instances where Ryan's Urshifu moves before Kion's Scarf Urshifu, probably establishing that it's consistently the faster Pokemon. I mean, just able to threaten the Close Combat into Urshifu again, but has to watch out for now. It already lost one stage of defense from the Close Combat on the previous turn. Grassy Glide might be enough damage to just pick up a KO here. If you just allow a Grassy Glide into Urshifu and a Surging Strikes into Pelipper for two KOs, well, that's a massive, massive lead for Keon. So Ryan probably going to be forced to reposition in some way here and find another avenue that is the Urshifu switching out, uh, trying to find the next position for it to be more successful in the field, and Amoongus just coming in to take the Grassy Glide instead. It's a smart call to just keep that Urshifu safe, but guess what? Keon's not going to make that same mistake twice, going for the so ever so juicy grassy glide into that Urshifu slot. Instead, going to go for the Aqua Jet, which is plenty to pick up the Pelipper. So smart calculations there as well to know that that is going to get caught. Really good insurance on that turn. Keon is expecting that the Urshifu is going to switch out, not take a grassy glide, and so he doesn't want to hit into that slot and be one turn behind. So he tries to be one turn ahead and switches Umbreon in. But you have to recognize the risk with that is the Urshifu just stays in in close combat to our Urshifu anyway. Well, a good way to make sure that there isn't as much risk from that is to go for the Aqua Jet and just pick up the KO onto the uh, Urshifu the other side, or onto the Pelipper on the other side that way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it just makes sure, too, that this Pelipper isn't going to keep doing that massive weather ball damage into the Zashin if you did bring it in the back. This Umbreon, though, it's going to be so pesky. You still have the opportunity to go for the terrestrialization from Keon, and if you go for the Water Terra now, that Umbreon is so safe. No longer are you going to get knocked out to something like a close combat, and it's great for the Calyrex, as you mentioned, too, to resist the Glacial Lances. 
it does seem like it's the best terrestrialization in this matchup. It gives Umbreon so much staying power. It's going to be really difficult for Ryan to take it out. And having it come on the field earlier means it's going to have more impact. But for now, just a close combat into Urshifu in the first KO for Ryan. Yeah, I mean, this Urshifu is already kind of done. Close combat into Urshifu in the first KO for Ryan. Yeah, I mean, this Urshifu has already kind of done its job, though. I feel like it's going to allow this Rillaboom to come back in, have the opportunity to set back up that fake out, and the foul play into the Urshifu is not very effective, but take a look at how much more it's going to be able to do. This Water Terrestrialization also continuing to pay off in spades. Go ahead and remove that weakness to the, wa the Pollen Puff as well. It feels like the water terrestrialization solves all of Umbreon's <laughs> type problems. Uh, no longer weak to Pollen Puff, and no longer weak to the close combat that this Urshifu on the other side is now locked into. Rolum doesn't have to worry about a Rage Powder and can just threaten a Grassy Glide in that slot. Um, the Umbreon can also threaten a Taunt into the Amoongus, like you mentioned before. Uh, and so this feels like a pretty strong position for Keon. We've had a trade of the Pelipper versus for the Urshifu. We also had it slowed down. A lot of times the most volatile position in a match is the lead, and Keon has gotten it slowed down into a more comfortable position for his team. It has been much better and still hasn't revealed that fourth or final Pokemon yet, and the patience is rewarded. Finally able to land that grassy glide into the target that this Rillaboom was so desperately trying to angle towards as the Umbreon attempts to go for a taunt into the Amoongus to shut down all of its utility, but Ryan, down two, his final two Pokemon in this second game. Very quickly moved to the final two Pokemon in this game. Just took a few turns for the KO to land into both Urshifu and Pelipper. Now, Umbreon, I think, is in an excellent position, can threaten a taunt into Amoongus, and once that lands, can try to chase down the Calyrex Ice Rider with a uh, foul play. Uh, you have to imagine that Calyrex is going to Terra into a fire type here. We'll let it be neutral to foul play and resist. Uh, grass attacks on the other side and one glacial lance will deal a ton of damage into this rillaboom and and start to pick up grimnade boost uh and and, and be a big problem i think i think what's tough about this too is that you are going to also kind of predict that i think if you're Keon, you have the opportunity to go for the high horsepower here and in front of a pokemon that has safety goggles and a grassy rillaboom you're, oh, okay you're just actually going to hit it with the wood hammer trying to chase as much damage as possible if it stays as an ice type still does a decent chunk of damage to it as a fire type the foul play added on top of that gets calyrex pretty low yeah but the glacial lance in response you can see that that rillaboom is not going to be able to take that so it is just a one-hit knockout and allows this ice raider calyrex to get the snowball going the first boost down chilling nay gives plus one attack to calyrex but that also does mean Foul play starts doing more and more damage as well. This Pollen Puff really crucial to heal Calyrex Ice Rider back up and make sure that Umbreon isn't just threatening a KO on the next turn. Yeah, I mean, it's so tough because I think, too, like, even though we saw the super effective nature get taken away from the foul play, it's still doing a lot, even just as a neutral hit. Oh, and with the Zashin in the back as well, perfectly safe and healthy, this is going to be Keon's final Pokemon in this game, too, as well. We're down to the last two on either side. Zacian can't hit into this fire type Calyrex uh, very well. Just has steel and fairy coverage, um, meaning that they're both resisted by the fire type Calyrex. Of course, both of these Pokemon now resist Glacial Lance, as you'd expect to see Calyrex Ice Rider switch to coverage, of which it can threaten a KO onto, Cali onto the Zacian on the other side straight away. Uh, and, and now, though, that you don't really have a great way to be able to, to hit the Calyrex, you have to also figure out, how are you actually going to deal with this Amoongus? That Amoongus Pollen Puff ended up really healing up so much of that damage onto the Calyrex. Plays such an important role. The Calyrex Ice Rider would have been worn down so quickly, but instead looks pretty healthy. And Amoongus, probably just looking for a taunt here, uh, buying time with a protector. No, just a double protect to stall through this turn. Gives Ryan a little bit of breathing room, tries to figure out exactly what's going to happen here, but Keon does not let that go unpunished. One way that this Zacian can get through some of the health of these two Pokemon, just set up the sword stance. What a gutsy call to recognize what in a very difficult end game. Zacian wasn't going to be able to deal out that much damage uh, and that it needed to get an attack boost to really be a problem and manages to find the perfect opportunity for it with Ryan just using a double protect to scout. Not really trying to move through any condition on the field or anything, just looking to see what Keon would do. Well, what Keon would do is sword stance, grab an attack boost, and turn that Zacian into a massive problem for Ryan. Should be able to threaten a one at KO onto Amoongus now. Of course, that can just be traded back, likely for a KO from the Calyrex Ice Rider, which would leave the Umbreon against the Calyrex Ice Rider on the other side, but those foul plays will quickly mount, and if Zacian is able to pick up a KO on Amoongus, there are no more Pollen Puffs. This turn, though, Zacian just protecting itself. 
Uh, smart call. You've already put a target on its back, and so you want to do your best to make sure it's not going to be a target of something like a high horsepower. But the Ongaron is able to land the taunt into the Samungas after it fails to go for the double protect. So you don't have the agency anymore to be able to pivot away these moves from the Zacian. Really smart, I think, also to force no protect on this next turn. It takes away the risk of a double protect. If the Moongus had landed the double protect while Zacian tried to attack into it and then Zacian went down to high horsepower, well, immediately Ryan regains the lead in this game. But with the taunt on the previous turn, Moongus just stuck, pollen puffing can be totally ignored and a behemoth blade can go into Calyrex. It's gonna be close because the foul play to be able to follow it up. That plus one chilling nay is enough to make that foul play to get the knockout. And it's just gonna be this Amunga left Kihan. It's gonna bring this back, it feels like, in this game number two. Such a gutsy sword stance that enabled it to happen, and then a, com a couple of really tactical, smart plays, getting the taunt onto Amoongus, managing to per- A non-grass-type Pokemon in that Zacian. But we are about to get underway here with our third and final game in this top four to see whether or not Kian or Ryan are going to move forward to the grand finals of the LA Regional Championships, and a big switch up here for Ryan as it's the Raging Bull and the Incineroar for this third game. Kion sticks to the game plan, has Rillaboom and Urshifu on the field, but like you mentioned, a total shift up for Ryan, has the Raging Bolt and the Incineroar on the field. Raging Bolt matches up into both of these Pokemon fairly well, does have to worry about a high horsepower plus close combat double up. Incineroar has to be weary of taking a Surging Strikes, could fake out either of these Pokemon and try to slow things down for a turn, but it might not be to Ryan's advantage because it's hard for the Raging Bolt to really capitalize on that if Urshifu just protects itself. For sure, but this Incineroar too, I think, is feeling the stress a little bit. That Urshifu could also pack a super effective close combat into that slot. So what better to take that than the Amoongus that would be able to deal with that a little bit better. But a nice fake out into this Raging Bolt means that it is not free to go for an attack this turn. It's going to give this Urshifu some breathing room to try to whittle away at its tankiness. Ultimately, Incineroar went untargeted on that turn, could have stayed on the field, but it was still in a poor position even if it stayed on the field. Wouldn't have done much more than parting shot uh, back or U-turn back off the field. Um, the Raging Bolt takes a close combat for a substantial chunk, but still doesn't look like it's in range of another close combat. The Grass Eagle train recovery helping keep it a little more healthy as well. Oh, well, here's one way that you can stop that threat of something like a Thunderclap just KOing your Urshifu, especially after you just dropped your special defense. Just go for the Grass Terra, and the Thunderclap isn't even what this Urging Bolt is going to lock into. It's just going to have to take this close combat, and whatever follow-up is going to happen with the high horsepower, it's going to miss into the Raging Bolt. No way! The Raging Bolt then gets an opportunity to fire back with his Draco Meteor, calling that this Terra is going to come through in a one-hit knockout in return. Just a brutal miss. Swings the tide of this game so much. The Grass Terrestrialization was called. It wasn't a Thunderclap into that slot. Just a Draco Meteor. Oh, and the Pollen Puff adds insult to injury. As the Roll Health Raging Bolt, it would have been KO'd by High Horsepower, ends up ending the turn about 70% health after the Grassy Train and the Pollen Puff. Uh, just a massive swing in this game. Oh, that's twice now. Kian has not been able to hit those high horsepowers. And with that punish means that there's an opportunity here too for this Incineroar to keep just lowering the attack stat of this Rillaboom. It might be really tanky. It still has a good tight matchup into something like the Raging Bolt and the Amoongus, and especially with the Assault Vest, helps it stay a little bit healthier. But Kian's definitely got his work cut out for him now. Absolutely, that Incineroar starts to look a lot more difficult to deal with without the Urshifu left on Ryan's side. It can come back in, intimidate this Rillaboom, and lessen the damage coming out from high horsepower, which is probably the best option to hit into Incineroar at this point. Uh, it means that Ryan can afford to play a very slow game, mounting damage onto these Pokemon. Oh, well, I mean, take a look at that. The high horsepower does land this time, but it's only going to do about 30% to this Incineroar. You can see how those Intimidates are really starting to stack up. Umbreon goes for the Yawn. It does have to take a Pollen Puff here after the Terrestrialization has already been spent on that Urshifu. And it's going to be a little bit in a predicament right now. Umbreon is just going to keep getting whittled down. Uh, Ryan is maybe forced to switch by a yawn, but I think the slow pace of this game is probably just in Ryan's advantage between the Intimidates and the Regenerator can just kind of heal back up, whereas Umbreon 
does not have that same advantage, is doesn't have any recovery move, that damage will stick other than Grassy Train recovery setting, and eventually even Grassy Train will go away unless Keon finds an opportunity to get Rillaboom on and off the field. Feels like they're just gonna, Keon's gonna have to make something happen, probably by pivoting out into whatever's in the back to kind of force this into more of an offensive game. Well, the Amoongus not going to be able to do too much there, especially if it gets put to sleep. That means that this Raging Bolt's going to take this high horsepower instead. As the Incinerator just goes for a parting shot, that's going to be a third drop onto this Rillaboom's attack stat, making those high horsepowers hurt less and less. Also, uh, gives an opportunity for this Incinerator to maybe even get this Amoongus back in. Take a look at the Regenerator healing. It's already back up to full. This is exactly the kind of slow pace and cycling that I'm talking about. Ryan can afford to do this and just build an advantage slowly. Well, the foul play into the Raging Bolt, actually not too bad of damage there. And it is going to make sure that this Raging Bolt is potentially in knockout range of yet an, another foul play or even just a double up into this slot for insurance. I think you're right. Keon's doing the right thing to try to punch a hole, and that's, that's how you have to break this kind of cycling core. Manages to find the Raging Bolt on the switch in with a high horsepower plus a foul play combination to land probably the most damage he possibly could have in that turn into the most vulnerable target. Now pretty low in health, and Moongus is just going to protect itself and leave this Raging Bolt hanging, trying to get one attack off before going down. Well, the Rillaboom is able to hit the high horsepower, but it's going to be just a sliver of HP, too little to take it out. Thunderbolt in response, but this Umbreon does go for the foul play double up. So the Raging Bolt that eluded the knockout just a couple of turns ago finally gets taken out. Very important KO for Keon to kind of finish the business that he started a few turns ago and get Raging Bolt KO'd. But all it does is create a free entry for Calyrex Ice Rider. That now with the Trastalization spent, the very lowered attack Rillaboom on the other side will have no way to get away from that Glacial Land's weakness. Of course, it may just want to get off the field anyway to, unset, to reset those Intimidates. You have to imagine the Zation working in the back, which is going to have a much better matchup against the Calyrex Ice Rider, can try to come into a Glacial Lance. We saw the Embryon foul playing consistently in the last game. Even after Calyrex Ice Rider becomes a fire type, those damage, the damage does mount up. Of course, Embryon is torn between two goals. It has to both start to deal the damage to Calyrex and build the opportunity for Zacian to pick up the KO or for Foul Play to finish the KO, but it has to also stop Amoongus from putting the entire team to sleep. If, if, it, if Keon doesn't take an opportunity to taunt while Amoongus is going for a spore, then even one sleep onto Zacian could be game ending. Well, here's a little bit of a uh, respite here for Keon. Is able to remove that Rillaboom, reset those drops, as you said, gets the Zashian in for free with that Intrepid Sword boost, but has to find a way to keep it, as Ryan is now going to match the Terrestrialization. It's a chance to invest that into this Ice Rider Calyrex, and that is going to make it take these attacks so much better with both of these Pokemon that Keon has on the other side. But it's about whether or not Keon can actually uh, go for the right calls here with the Taunt and the Calyrex knows that one of the biggest issues that we're going to have here in this game is if this Trick Room gets set up and now knows that the Trick Room was what was selected. Such a good call from Kion. There's so many different priorities and options on that previous turn. Could have been a Taunt into an Amoongus, could have been damage into Calyrex, but finds the perfect thing, which is preventing that Trick Room from going up and the Calyrex from grabbing the speed advantage. Still an uphill battle. Still Amoongus at full health and Calyrex at full health. The Intimidate still lurking in the back, ready to undo that Intrepid Sword boost at whatever point Ryan feels like that, but that is a step in the right direction. It's one of many turns that Keon's going to need to get right to kind of claw back a solid position in this game because of the, just the, the, the fundamental problem of the type chart here and Zacian really not being able to find that easy of damage into the Calyrex Ice Rider. Well, that damage is going to be even harder because one thing that these Zacians on stream have not had to deal with before is the threat of Intimidate. And because there's no clear amulet on this crown Zacian because it's holding that Rusted Sword, it has no choice except to have to kind of take these Intimidate drops. One way that it can get past that, though, is by going for these sword stances as Umbreon's just going to keep firing off off these yawns. Wow. So just kind of forcing these Pokemon to have to make this rotation lest they get put to sleep. And this Umbreon is certainly on a timer when it comes to how much damage it can pack into this Calyrex. Umbreon now very low, and if it gives over a KO into Glacial Lance, that's just a boost into the Calyrex on the other side. Incineroar comes in, takes the on. You have to imagine it wants to pivot out pretty quickly anyway, but it, the on does make this a lot more risky. You can't go for a fake out for a turn or you might fall asleep. And if you parting shot into a protect, you could also get stuck on the field and end up asleep. So there's definitely some torn 
priorities here between just safely getting Incineroar away from the sleep, uh, which would also risk uh, Amoongus if Zacian just attacks into that slot, um, versus trying to have Incineroar uh, stay on the field through this yawn. It's so tough, too, because you kind of have to make the call, too, that you're not going to take a Glacial Lance as one of two attacking options that this Ice Rider Calyrex does have. So Kion risking it, bringing this Rillaboom back in, hopefully to not have to take an attack like that. You get a chance to set up the Grassy Surge, but more the more of that what you really want is to be able to get out something like the high horsepower but the play rough it's gonna miss the incineroar keon can just not catch a break as the high horsepower lands into the zashian itself that's a several misses in a row that keon has had to deal with still has a chance in this game but it's not easy really crucial misses from fairly accurate attacks play rough is not a move like Liquid storm that misses all the time um Still, I don't think a bad turn for Keon. The turn would have been disaster if it's, it, disastrous if High Horsepower had been enough damage to pick up the KO on Zacian. But Incineroar falls asleep. Zacian's still on the field. Rill of Whom finds a safe entry to now threaten Fake Out into the Calyrex Ice Rider on the other side. That gives a free turn for Zacian now to either go for a Sword Stance or to start picking up damage. I think the game, the complexion of the game looks a little bit better for Keon after that last turn, despite the Play Rough Mist. Would have looked even better if Play Rough had landed and threatened a KO into Incineroar on the other side. Can Kion actually get another sword stance set up though? As this Rillaboom is actually going to take another reprieve, this Umbreon taking its place on the field still at such a low HP, but needs to make sure that it can still provide that utility after this Ice Rider Calyrex has shaken off the taunt. Wow, we do see yet another pivot of this Amoongus now coming back in to take that Incineroar's place. But the Protect here, did Keon call this right? He's been able to weave in so many risky plays before and gets it right again with yet another sword stance. So this Zacian is now has several stacks of increased attack. Keon betting it all on the Calyrex Ice Rider Protect there. Doesn't throw the fake out into that slot, just trusts that the, the Calyrex will understand the threat and will protect on that turn. Switches the the Rillaboom out to try to threaten Fake Out in a future turn, gets Umbreon back in to threaten Taunt into Amoongus on this turn, and gives Zacian another two stages of boosted attack, now at plus four. That means even if Incineroar comes back in and intimidates, the Zacian will still be at plus three. The problem is that even at plus three, Zacian is not threatening a KO into this Calyrex because it only has resisted moves. And it becomes very difficult to see how, with Umbreon at this low of health, Keon finds extra attacks into that slot. Something like a foul play and uh, play rough double up into Calyrex can be really easily disrupted by a Rage Powder at this point. And Rage Powder feels... This turn and gives Zacian another two stages of boosted attack, now at plus four. That means even if Incineroar comes back in and intimidates, the Zacian will still be at plus three. The problem is that even at plus three, Zacian is not threatening a KO into this Calyrex because it only has resisted moves. And it becomes very difficult to see how, with Umbreon at this low of health, Keon finds extra attacks into that slot. Something like a foul play and... Uh, play rough double up into Calyrex can be really easily disrupted by a Rage Powder at this point. And Rage Powder feels like the perfect uh, thing to use when you know that this Zacian cannot actually deal with that. And it's just going to go for another Sword Stance. So it doesn't even fall victim to the idea that this Amoongus could Rage Powder away. But it does mean that this foul play is going to land into it instead. Umbreon going to knock itself out from that Rocky Helmet. Coll collision, and it's just going to leave this Calyrex open to go for the Glacial Lance. A huge risk here for Kion that is not going to pay off this time around, losing the Zashin in the process, and just having the Rillaboom left to stand. Only Rillaboom to deal with Amoongus and Calyrex that now has boosts. Uh, it sounds like it's a little bit too much to deal with. Maybe a high horsepower critical hit. Uh, but no, I think Brian has found the window. Felt like he had a big lead, and Kian was just making all of the right plays to stay in this game, try to stay ahead in this game. But ultimately, Brian finds the window and moves into the finals of the LA Regional Championship. What amazing gameplay from both of our trainers.